Hello everybody, welcome to my video about alternate pseudoswaps. Now, what are alternate pseudoswaps? They are when you swap pieces in 3-blind that are not UF, UR for parity. So let's take a step back. Uh, assuming you use CECC, like the mo uh, majority of people, when you first learn 3-blind with buffers UF and UR, UFR, you're usually told just to pseudoswap these two in memo and do an alg that just swaps UFR with the last corner target and those two to like something like this, right? You can definitely get fast by doing this, but why limit yourself to just swapping UFR? So what I propose is whenever you have parity in three blind, you should think of it like this. Swap any two corners and any two edges that are convenient to you, um, and then just do the algorithm that swaps them. In other words, just set up to a 2E, 2C. You can probably apply this uh, most of the stuff to ECCE, but I'll be showing stuff using CE, EC only for this, because that's what I use. So before everything, I'm just going to say that this technique only applies to parity scrambles, because why would you be pseudo-swapping? I mean, maybe if you could set up to a 2E, 2 but that's, that's for another time. If you don't, if you don't have parity, this most of the time won't apply. So for I like to think that there are three different levels of pseudo-swapping. Um, number one would just be defaulting to parity elk for a specific corner that doesn't use UF UR swap. So for example, I use this for BUL that swaps UB and UL and it's really fast. It's my default elk for that case. So I'll swap these unless I can't save an elk, which is what I'm going to talk about. So. Number two is using different algs based on what is already solved in edges. And then number three is something that I have trouble explaining, but it is dynamically changing what alg you're going to use based on what you have solved during edges. Um, so number three is very hard to explain, like I said. I know how to do it, but uh, and I've gained like the intuition for it, but I haven't really found a great way to explain it. Um, if you're really, really interested, my most, most uh, basic explanation would be that if you solve something into place, you don't want to have your pseudo swap including that. And you just have to kind of improvise as you go. Um, but there's a lot more to it than just that. So maybe a video you can look forward to in the future. You don't necessarily have to tackle these in order, but I just wanted like a logical separation to the elements in this video. Uh, so to start off with, defaulting to an alg not using UF UR pseudoswap. By default, I mean this is what I'll use. If I can't see, I can possibly save any algs based on what is solved in edges. We're going to cover this after this. So I'll show my four main algs that I default to using different swaps, and uh, a couple other algs I found uh, uh, I found that are cool, but. I don't usually implement these into my souls because they can be hard to uh, do stuff with, but I'll put all these in the description. So first one is UFR UBL, UBUL. This is just standard Y firm. Some people like to use an alg that has some like R wide and stuff with UD. If that's faster than for you, go for it. But I prefer to use just Y firm with UBL swap because for certain reasons, but hard to explain. Next one would be UFR, UFL. So instead of doing U lefty J perm, which people do normally, or like some people do this thing, I just do U prime normal J perm and then the cancels with the last day UF. So this is just UF UL swap. The one I talked about earlier next, BUL, which is U prime R prime U prime to J perm. And you just have this massive cancellation at the end. Um, and then Last one I use sometimes is like this, which, because some, I don't know, I don't usually like this one that starts with R, uh, LB, so this is kind of a RD into the uh, R2UD, whatever, I'll put that, or you can use this, I use this sometimes, which is regroup list, but I find to be a bit slower. Uh, there's some other mood dependent ones that I do, just if I feel like it, but these are the ones that I usually default to that are significantly faster than the standard ones everyone uses for UFR. Uh, for me at least, this could be different for me for you. You have to find what works for you and not works for me. 
So now onto the cool Alex that I found. This one is UFR LUF uh, UFBR. This one, I think it's 11 moves and it's really fast. You can also change what pieces are swapped with U and D and stuff, like a lot of Alex. I don't use this much, but it's just cool. Next one is this one. Uh, this swaps UFR LDF UF LD. And it's easy to remember and stuff. And that, again, you can change what, what I'll do, whatever based on UD moves. Uh, now, next one. This one I discovered. I don't use this at all unless there's something really obvious. But UFR RDB BDBR U prime to the J perm that starts with R two prime. Except you don't really rotate. So that's it for the, what I like to call default swaps. Next, I'll be talking about how you can save algs on your solves just by doing alternate algs uh, like based on what is salt, what you see is salt in edges. So as a note, you won't always save an alg by doing this, but I find that getting into the habit of just doing this is very important and you'll save more algs in the long run than if you don't. So what I suggest during corner memo in a solve, you kind of open up your peripheral vision and you see what is solved. So you shouldn't be thinking about this peripheral vision thing, but it should be it should come to you just by doing a bunch of solves with alternate pseudo swaps. Um, and it comes with experience. So after determining your last corner target in corners, or yeah, obviously in corners, but <laughs> you're getting head into edges, you have uh, you should know what swaps can be done with that last corner target. So basically what Alex you know, what is your repertoire, and you should also know what um, swaps are already set up or what you can find that will possibly save an alg. Um, I suggest, I'll, I'll show some examples, and I suggest you pick up your cube and you follow along because I will not be naming piece names. I've tried doing this video, I've filmed this video before, and it took way too long to go through everything calling out piece names. So. I'll just explain the thought process. We have here to here to here. This is our buffer. Usually I would float here, but for demonstration purposes, I will just cycle break here. Um, uh, so we go here, here, back to here. Now I'm gonna break to this, this yellow sticker back here because, well, for demonstration purposes, like I said. Uh, maybe you'd wanna break to here to have the nice, nicer parity out, but with alternate pseudo swaps, you don't know, anything could happen. So we have our corners. This is our last target over here, UBL. And like I said earlier, my UBL parity elegant is just a Y perm with these two swaps. So instead of shooting this to here, I'm going to shoot this to here. So I'm just going to go through edges. I'm not going to really memo it first. I'm just going to go through. I suggest you follow along. You don't have to use the same columns. Okay, look, here we get to the UB piece, but instead of shooting it there, we're going to go to UL because that is a swap we're doing. Uh, and then, oh, we could float here too. So M to uh, this. Then corners, I use this 7 mover. So I'm, I'll do pure here just for this. And then we have our Y turn that we set up to. Next. Let's see what we can do here. I'm going to break UBR to here, here, back to here. Uh, since the, I don't know if the buffer is flipped or solved, I'm not going to try to float here, but I will go here to, uh, let me just see what I've, okay, so we're going to go to UBL. This is what I have in my notes. This is probably net, not the best cycle break, but it will demonstrate what I have to show you. So we're going to go UBL, FUL, then here to here, and we have this is our last target, and while it's raising corners, I see that this is swapped with this, and since we have a UBL target, we can set up to an ALG that uses UBL swap. I mean, not just because we have a UBL target, but I know an ALG, I'll show you. This is a UBL parity ALG that swaps this with here, uh, and then just swaps these two. So we can set up to that, and possibly save an ALG. I will just go through corner uh, edges, so standard and here we're not going to go here we're going to go back here and I will just cycle break to it doesn't matter I'm going to do this eight mover here okay back here. 
Uh, I'm going to play against the edge here. Okay, now onto corners. We have these two swapped. Remember, I'm just going to go through what I traced earlier. Uh, where did I go? Okay, I went back here. And we have set up to this swap, and I think from when I was going through the solve, uh, solve earlier, we did save an alleg on that. Next solve, I'm going to go here to RBU, because that is fast. Here to here. Here, let me see what I wrote in my notes. Okay, we're going to break UBL again. Then here to there. Then our last target is BUL. And for that, let's see. This is solved, well, pseudo solved in place. So I don't want to do UBL swap because I see I can actually save or possibly save an alg just by being smart with this. So I will do the lefty alg that people use for that. Some people use this other ZBL thing, but whatever. Here to here to here. Here to here, I just do F. F prime is also good back there. Uh, so as we see, if I were to do UBL swap, it'd be slow because I'd have to go here, here, and then flip or break into the flip. But we save an alloc by just doing UF4 swap based on what's solved. I'm going to go go through corners. Like I said, we're breaking UBL. I don't have a good alloc for this. And then we will do the alloc for UF4. Final example solve. I know this is a lot, but I try to. I just want to explain everything. So here to here to here. Back here to here. And we have here. I'm going to since we have this is our parity target and we have a twist. I'm just going to break into the twist. We're going to go to RBU because that's the U face sticker, and I want to demonstrate cool stuff. Although breaking to UBR would actually be also fast. Uh, so with RBU, we can just set up to, based on what I see, right, UR is solved in U, uh, UL is solved in UR, and this sets up very elegantly to a T perm. So I will go to this, through this, this, we can't, I'm not going to go here because that's kind of solved in place. I'm just going to go back here to UV. Next, remember we're not putting this in UR, we're putting it in here. I must have done something wrong. The lighting is off. Okay, yeah, it's... Okay, and then I could float uh, DF. Okay, now my focus is off too. Okay, we go to DF. You don't have to float for this, but I just... It's there, so why not? Okay, here to here to here, like I talked about earlier. There to there to there. Uh, try to follow along. Just use your own comms. Okay. We're going to uh, the UBR sticker there, and we set up the T-Term. I don't think the same now, but like I said, just get into the habit of doing it. So I'm going to go through some algs that you can base your alternate algorithms off of. I'm not going to spoon, I'm not gonna spoon, spoon feed you every one of these alternate algs, but I'm going to try to give you a toolkit, and you should be able to work with these and be creative and find setups or stuff like that to these alex to find your alternate parity alex. So first kind of thing I'm going to give you is that any time you get to U phase target, be that UBR, BUR, or RBU, or any of the other ones, anything on the U phase, instead of doing, let's say, uh, UFR, UBR, UFUR, you can do uh, basically the author buffers parity alex to UFR. So for example, here, instead of doing UFUR swap, we're going to do UBUR swap. And this is the uh, the what, well, the standard, I don't even know if anybody uses UBR, but this is the standard parity alloc, I'd say, for UBR, because you're just swapping the adjacent to the buffer pieces. Uh, so this works for all, everything over here. Another example, stuff like this, UFUR, LUF. These algs are usually intuitive. Uh, number two. T perm cyclic shift. This is very powerful for uh, opposite swaps. So how this goes is just you do F prime T perm, and this will cancel into uh, whatever the alloc. So it's kind of like the J perm thing cyclic shift everybody does, except it's T perm. You can also start this with F two, 
and that leads to its own possibilities. Uh, another one, Lucas J Perm that I like to call. I don't think it's actually called Lucas J Perm, but whatever. And it's cyclic shifts. So starting it with different moves that are in the algorithm and shifting the alg. Uh, another one that is very useful for D layer targets with UFR is R to J Perm. This swaps UF, FR, and you can do D, D prime, D2 setups to this. And that is fast. I don't use that that much, but it's something that I should be using. Next, just PLLs that are two, uh, two C2Es, like this, like R perm, or uh, I don't know, something like this other thing. I don't know the names of PLLs, but stuff, everything like this. Any PLLs that are two C2Es. E uh, next, S and S prime setups to all you already know, although don't go crazy. Don't do stuff like S2, this alg, don't do that. Just be smart, okay, please. Don't improvise full parity. Uh, but you can still find some cool stuff. Maybe something like S prime J per S prime. I don't know. Next, uh, any ZBLLs you know, uh, if you're a three by three solver. And if you don't, you know, you could always go out and learn some if you want. Next, is just anything else you could come up with anything be creative find some stuff so basically what I want you to take out of this video is that don't go out and learn full parody unless you want to but it's not I don't know there's not that many great resources and stuff just uh, try to be smart with your solutions and don't always be robotic and do the exact same thing try to be creative and find algs you can set up to and everything something like this Keeper, we start with R prime. This is a cool alg, and you can set up to this when you're smart, and not just cycle where you can do three different algs for one case like that. Just be creative. If there's anything I missed or anything you want to add, just leave it in the comments. Any questions, I'll try to answer them with my account. Uh, thanks for watching and subscribe.